Now, if you were with me 20 years ago, do you know how many autistic babies we muscle biopsy to look for mitochondrial weakness? Hundreds. Hundreds. Because everything we saw, it looked like the mitochondria was weak. So we're like, oh, they must have mitochondrial disease, and we'd go do muscle biopsies on them. And we never found mitochondrial disease, but we never thought of the mitochondria uncoupling. Because the nervous system is the highest energy organ, but that's what the research shows us in the cell danger response. Now, eventually, in some kids, the mitochondria recouples and they come out of it. But there's other kids where they might partially come out of it, but they sometimes it's so severe that the child will actually be growth delayed. I have several kids on the spectrum who have seizure disorders, too, and, and they're, they're 20 years old and they look like a 10-year-old because they mitochondrial uncoupled practically the whole body. So what's really interesting lately is we're really seeing um, kind of a different pattern for certain kids. In my hands today, if I receive, let's say, a three-year-old that's definitely on the spectrum, is nonverbal, I will tell you if I use standard techniques of replacing their nutrition, calming their inflammation, uh, basically making sure they are nutritionally whole, I have a 70% chance of making that kid essentially functional.